Good evening and welcome to episode 7 of Focal Point here on Newsfest. I am Ruha Zairfan. Today we are going to discuss on a topic that is very relevant these days and that is how acute the medicine shortage is and should the people be concerned. And to discuss this I have Dr. Anwar Hamdani who is the Director of Medical Technological Services of the Ministry of Health. Thank you doctor for joining us here on Focal Point. Thank you so much for inviting me. Doctor, now a question that is uh, in everyone's mind these days is how acute the medicine shortage is and what are the critical drugs that we are missing here in Sri Lanka? Rather, let me take it on the onset like this. This is a challenging period. Let that be on health, let that be on general human lives. So within this context, there are shortages of acute medicines which is coming through from the Ministry of Health and uh, in not only in the government sector even in the private sector. So we would ha we would uh, we should actually rather abide by what is happening through we should actually you know believe and accept the fact that there is a shortage of vital drugs which are essentially needed to save human lives. So we have categorized them, we have identified them, we have categorized them into about three categories. Basically, this is the general categorization which has been followed by all over the world. We have identified about 11 to 14 drugs, vital drugs, which are considered as vital, which is very, very important to save lives. And then again, about another 14 to 15 surgical items, which are very essential or very vital rather, and then about 46 to 50 essential drugs which is going to be very important for people to save their lives. So this identification has been already done and within this uh, process we have actually gone through to prioritize what are the most important drugs and how quickly we can get them. And this is a very common question that all of us like you know being having in our minds that how acute is the situation? It is true and well, it is alarming. We should be admitting that it is alarming, but we have come out with a process, we have come out with a program, we have come out with different projects to overcome this and to deliver an inclusive healthcare service, not to marginalize anybody over a shortage of drugs. So, but that will be so challenging because Sri Lanka is known as one of the best health systems in the Southeast Asia as well as in the Asian context. But still, we are also facing some sort of troubles, turmoils, you know, you know, challenges during this period. So, let me put it into a nutshell and tell you how acute is the problem. Yes, there is a shortage. We all have to understand that. And we have identified what are the shortages and we have taken remedies to overcome that, but there will be a lead time where we will be overcoming that and I mean this is going to be a transitional period of events where people have also to bear in mind to protect themselves and prevent themselves from getting into diseases and as well as in the same event if there is anything acutely coming up, please do not hesitate to go into a hospital and get yourself checked, then procrastinating and getting into more troubles. Doctor, now as a country that imports medicine, uh, what are the medicines we need urgently and in what quantities do we need these medicines? Rather, I would put it in this way, see most of our 80 percent of drugs have been, been imported from India, Bangladesh, Pakistan and from the western end from then again Thailand, Indonesia, the most of the countries, Singapore, most of the countries we import drugs. So about 20, 25 percent has been manufactured here, we have started the manufacturing also. But yet again, even to manufacture we need raw materials, which most of the raw materials have been imported. And since most of the drugs have been imported, I think that is why we are running short out of it, because we will have to accept the fact that we are running into forex crisis and this was this was not this was not expected by any means because for two years we've been running through on a covid unprecedented global pandemic which we just overcame you know very smoothly 
than more than any other Asian country in the region because we were we were the first most to overcome that in a very successful way. But then again, we were hit with the economic crisis because in the in the initial phase also, I used to always tell that the health disease or health problem per se is not going not only going to be a health problem. It's going to be a problem with social, political, economical, cultural effects. So which has resulted this. So to overcome this, we've been discussing over uh, with the World Bank, the Asian Development Bank, because as I told you, most of these things have been imported. So we need foreign exchange for that. So to need to cater that foreign exchange, we've got different credit lines from World Bank, Asian Development Bank, the Indian credit line, the Indonesian credit line is yet to come. And there are different Chinese, the USA, so different credit lines are going to come in to help them. But that is going to be a medium term plan because that's going to take time for about, you know, four to six weeks to overcome this. Doctor, now the people are panicking because there is a medicine shortage and this could lead to hoarding of medicine. What is the expert advice you could give to the people and how they should act in a situation like this? We should never get panic over situations because it's, it's life is evolving, life is changing. So first identify whatever you have. If you have you know, been identified with a disease, if you are feeling bad of yourself, do not hesitate, do not procrastinate. Meet your doctor immediately, try to find out what you have. Just randomly visiting pharmacies, just randomly visiting places or whoever has taken this medicine before and whoever has advised you telling that this medicine I have taken before and which would be beneficial, please do take it. Do not do that and do not, you know, withhold or you do not stockpile, I you know, drugs at home which should not be useful for anybody, which you will not be also using because those drugs, most of these drugs has to be kept in, in a particular temperature, which is the room temperature rather, not that every house will have 25 centigrade of room temperature, it will differ. So do not stockpile like that, please visit your doctor, take whatever the quantity or whatever is been prescribed to you and do, do not unnecessarily store drugs. I know I, I have seen some people like you know so we will not have drugs for the uh, drugs in about another three months to four months time so they, they keep on buying, buying the same drugs for about three to four months and which eventually the prescription is going to change over time so do not do that please because that is very essential by that you are not only saving your health in orderly you are providing another person having that opportunity of getting that particular medicine. So, which on the whole process will have to understand how these things are going to, to work out. So, in this first and foremost I would like I would like to you know you know urge everybody or the Sri Lankans around the globe, please do not hesitate to help the fellow citizens here and it's your duty to do that and that is what we are exactly doing now because all these credit lines or whatever the so-called mechanisms are going to get enacted in about four to six weeks time. Till then we need to bridge the gap. So we need to stop the crash. To, to stop the crash we need donations. So it's very essential to get your fellow citizens healthy. Think about that. You know, Please do come forward to donate and please do it with, with all your you know, good intentions which will be rewarded and that is what we are doing exactly up until now. We've, we've got donations from countries, organizations, individuals as well as you know different non-governmental organizations have come forward. We've roughly accumulated about 7.8 to 8 million US dollars worth of donations up until now to the Ministry of Health along with that about close to about 10 million Sri Lankan rupees or about 300,000 Indian rupees INR. So these are the fi facts and figures for the donations up until now from countries, individuals and organizations. And apart from that, per month we need about 34 to 37 million US dollars. The government invests on you but 34 to 37 million US dollars to give healthcare services free of charge.